if you can just look at how fast these overheads and lows are, it's like they're not reacting to all of these things. They're guessing. What is up, y'all? KRC Pinto here. Welcome back to Secret Sauce. Today, another Blaze Blue Central Fiction episode, and we have Jonah here, one of the best Valkenhines in the world. Jonah, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. Really looking forward to talking about this character. I love his aesthetic. He's got this, like, uh, just badass old man vibe going on, and then, you know, sometimes he's a wolf, so that's fun. Like, Twilight Princess vibes, but old. I'm, in, <laughs> I'm into that, you know? yeah definitely yeah no it's like the older part that makes it cool right yeah right that's that's the cell i mean look at this fit this guy's just crushing it i love your color too by the way this color is perfect. oh yeah you know this wasn't always my color because uh i think for a lot of tournaments they didn't have it so typically yeah. i just go in like uh uh typically he actually has an uh a color palette for like his uh his look when he was younger like in the in the lore and stuff and that's like color seven i think i used to use that one a lot well today we're gonna uh dive into what makes valkenhain our helsing tick how you play him and uh, i'm excited to explore it man you ready to get started absolutely all right let's do it all right jonah so you know i like to start these with uh with the elevator pitch for the characters so sell me valkenhain in one sentence what does he do what's he all about well, he moves all around the screen, and when he gets in, he mixes you up, and he doesn't let you leave most of the time, unless you, you know, it depends on who you're fighting, but typically, you get a lot of chances to do whatever you want when you're, when you're fighting a character, especially when, when you're up close to them in wolf form, especially if they don't have a reversal, because uh, you can just, like, their characters like Noel or Terami without 50 meter, where you can just... You just gotta do whatever you want and it's really fun to he, this character has so many options to you that you can kind of just play him however you want to and he he really reflects that in his um in his offense and his neutral because he's able to just fly all over the place and there's so many different ways to approach and there's so many different ways to mix people up like it, it just it's a very freeform character, which I think is a, it's a freeform character, and he's very flexible in his options, uh, aside from defense, of course. Mobility and mix-up lets you freestyle. It just sounds like a good old fun time. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It really is. Love that. Unless you're fighting one of his bad matchups, and it's not so fun. But <laughs> it's uh, but you know that's with every that's with every character, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Does he have anything that's super polarizing in this game? Like any matchups that are just straight up abysmal? Uh, he does not fight the top tiers in this game very well, to be frankly honest. Uh, characters like Izanami, Lychee, um, well, he, he does fight Carl pretty well, actually. Like, not, not like he doesn't beat him, but he can fight him pretty well. But, um, uh, and Rachel, that's really hard too. And, uh, Izior, that's pretty hard as well. But he... Uh, and S, I think those are like, you know, five matchups that are, you know, particularly difficult just because like they have a lot of screen presence and, you know, it's hard for him to maneuver around all their projectiles and uh, and get his game plan going with manageable wolf meter. But, uh, you know, it's not like those matchups are so bad he can't win them because uh, he's he's a he's a strong enough character to to win against anybody. What is your favorite move of his and why? Favorite move of his, huh? Well, I'm sure me and pretty much every Valkenheim player thinks the same, but I'd, I'd have to say it's his jumping A. You know, it's the one that all the memes are about. It's the one where all his characters centralizes around. This is like his button. It's pretty much what enables all his mix-up, his neutral, and um, and it, it just emphasizes Valkenheim. When everybody who plays Blaze for a while, when they think of Valkenheim, they think of this button. <laughs> And for good reason, because that's the button that's opening everybody up on offense all the time. Dude, because that it's like uh, so fast. I, I know, right? Yeah, it's just like just that's an overhead, and uh, it leads to full combo. It's not like a damaging combo, but it's still a combo nonetheless, and he can uh, regenerate some wolf meter, so he can possibly do it again. Jeez, that's crazy. How is it? How is it in the air? Like I know it's good on mix up, close up, but is it is it good in other situations as well? 
Yeah, no, it's great for a neutral. I use it all the time to lock people down in the air because uh, it's a really big hitbox that it has on it. It's a lot bigger than you might think because uh, and you're able to do it three times in the air too. So you're able to like jail them in the air like this and kind of go in for more for more mix-ups once they land. So I really like that aspect about it. And um, and yeah, I think that it's his most. Uh, it's his trademark move, and I think it's like that for a reason, because that's where his whole game plan revolves around, essentially. That's like the cornerstone of his of his character. Gotcha. Well, this is a character who essentially has two movesets because of his stances between wolf and human. So what, what's your favorite human move of his? You know, I'd say my favorite move in human form for him is it has to be his JC. Yeah, his JC is, uh, you know, his other instant overhead, which is, you know, why I like it so much. Yeah, even in even in human form, he has access to instant overheads, which are, which is, um, which is not a privilege that many characters get to have. So that's really good. Even when he's low on wolf meter, he can still mix people up between like doing that or doing this. And uh, he can't combo after it without spending some meter or a resource like overdrive, but um, it's very much worth it if whenever you can go for it. And uh, it's also great in neutral too. It's a really big, uh, really big hitbox that you can use to jump in on opponents. Like a very common Valk approach is to do uh, is to be in wolf form and to air dash and untransform into into untransform back and then go into the JC. It's really nice. It's just it just shouldn't be abused too much because you know it's still it's still an aerial approach and it can get anti-aired at the right angle. So um, it, you should be careful with that. But you know, aside from that, it's like it's definitely his overall. I'd say it's his most useful move in human form. Let's talk about his drive. So this game, you know, there's a drive button. There's something unique to every character. We've already touched on the fact that he shifts back and forth between human and wolf, but let's let's go a little deeper on it. How does his drive come into play for his game plan? Well, you know, as you can see already, this is how he moves around. He goes into wolf form and out of wolf form in order to to move around the screen. And uh, he also uses it in his uh, in his offense, like whenever he decides to get in he's always he's spending wolf meter in his wolf dashes that's what it, being in wolf form itself like standing still doesn't cause any wolf meter which is something new to cf but being in the air uh walking back doing cannons and uh, and uh dashing are the main uses of his meter and the dash is being the quickest usage of it for good reason because that's how he extends his pressure and does all his uh, overheads and stuff like that and um that's essentially how he you know gets his off gets his game plan started is using his wolf meter when he once he's in of course but also it's how he navigates the screen so what are some of the distinctions between his human form and his wolf form like what's what are the perks of being in wolf overall yeah well being in wolf form as you can see lets you move like really well and uh you also have access to good buttons like jb or ja like what i said before his jb is pretty good too but uh, it isn't used as much as ja and also you get access to a very good anti-air which is uh wolf 5b it's uh it's so good that uh oftentimes when it trades uh you're still able to get a combo off of it because uh because of the way it launches the opponent which is really, really helpful, and that's how I get a lot of hits in neutral, to be completely honest. But with um, in human form, his mobility is a lot more stifled, because uh, he can't run. So he just has a hop dash, which is probably the worst kind of dash in Blaze Blue. But, you know, it's he has a wolf form run that goes, like, it's the fastest run speed in the game, more or less. So it more than, it more than makes up for it. But uh, he has access to pretty long buttons in uh in his wolf form and all right no in his human form he has access to pretty good buttons in his that that have a lot of reach but uh he can't take a huge advantage of it because of his stifled movement but uh it's more like uh i mean preferably you're in wolf form almost all the time unless uh you know something bad happens or um or something uh or just yeah, just basically if something goes wrong in your neutral or offensive game plan, most of the time you sh you're in wolf form, and uh, the times you're in human form are just to buy time, 
to get back into wolf form more or less but uh you, you know human form is what you see a lot in his combos because that's what he has to revert back to uh in a lot of his combos in order for the um for them to work properly like you know he, he has to go back into his human form in order to continue where his uh wolf form uh you know began the combo and uh it's it's pretty hard to do that executionally especially for someone picking up the character because uh you have to like untransform yourself and then press the button before they land so um a, a very common uh question for many uh new valkenheim players is how do i do uh this that link right there like the the wolf uh, like the wolf sweep into the j into this it's um like i can do it because i've been playing this character for years but it it's uh it's not easy to do especially at first so um so it's just something that you know takes a lot of practice but uh you know he's he's very much worth it i feel i i definitely don't regret playing him after all these years what happens if you uh, mismanage your meter a little bit and the wolf meter completely runs out? Oh yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad because uh, when the wolf meter runs out, which uh, it will, even it, it happens for for experienced Valk players as well. Even the best Valks in the world, they all run out of wolf meter at some point. But yeah, in that whole time where the gauge is xed out like that, you can't go into wolf form at all. So uh, you can see me mashing D here and nothing's happening. And in this time, you're in your human form, and most of the time, you're just rather ru you're running away, and uh, trying to minimize the damage until your wolf meter comes back, and then you get to you get to you know play the game again more or less. So the drive button itself shifts you back and forth between you know wolf and human, like just five D. But when you're in wolf form, you get access to the dashes. Let's talk about those a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, so he has a dash for every single direction. In the yeah he can do it uh wherever he wants so it gives him a lot of free form and the nice thing about the back dashes like four and 70 is that they have a little bit of uh invul time on the startup so you can use it to uh to evade stuff like uh dps Ooh. no i didn't do it there but yeah you can avoid stuff like dps you can avoid stuff like supers Basically, just avoid stuff from just killing you. It's basically how you get out of those situations. And uh, but his forward dashes, you know, they leave him airborne. All his dashes leave him airborne, except for like the, you know, the grounded ones. But you know, those are more for like tricking your opponent. Would that be like two, one, and three? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then you, you use the one uh, air dash in order to do his break jump A. Which is uh, the full input for that is one C, uh, one D C A. So you have to plank those all together in succession like that. Oh, because the C causes it to break, right? Yeah, so the C causes the mo the one to break, and then you have to input the A in that time frame. Ooh. If you do it too slow, uh, it, you, you, nothing will come out. And if you do it, if you do it too fast, nothing will come out. You, you kind of have to just find the right timing for it. Jeez. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of execution there. Yeah, but you know, like I said before, it's just it's something you get used to as you play the character more, and you kind of like just take it one uh one layer at a time with his mix-ups and whatnot. Makes sense. Um, okay, last thing I want to touch on with the drive is uh, if you're human and fo do forty, I believe you get a a neat little backflip into Wolf, correct? Yeah. This is like another way that you can go into wolf form. And it's also it can be used on defense too, which is kind of nice because uh, it has a little bit of invul frames in the middle of it. So you're kind of able to get away from sticky situations if you can see the gap, but shouldn't mash it because uh, it, it can get blown up by accident if you, um, you know, if you, uh, if you don't use it right, because it does have some startup on it like there, like it's, it, it's not invul on frame one. So, but if you can find like a big enough gap for it, you can use it to escape pressure, or like you know any any gaps that that would have that that would result in that. But um, yeah, it's 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 nice to use a neutral too, just to get some space from the opponent to get into wolf form because uh, you know most of the time uh, most people want to just come at you after you, so you don't like go into wolf form too much 
Because you can't block while you're in this form, which is a big caveat for it. Which is why navigating around projectile characters is, is kind of tricky, because you can't block while you're doing that. Even if you do have a... but you do have the really fast movement to, to help you with that. You just have to kind of like thread the needle, so to speak, against those characters. But, uh, you know, against other characters, you know, this is a good way to kind of get some space and kind of, uh, you know, get, get your wolf, mo wolf movement started from a safe distance. So let's talk about neutral with Valkenhayn. You know, he's, uh, he's super mobile. He, uh, he's got his wolf to get him around the screen, but you can't block with it, which I'm sure adds to, you know, how you play neutral like we were just talking about. So, you know, what's, what's your general game plan when you're in a neutral situation? What are you doing with this character? Yeah, a lot of what I'm doing with this character is I'm waiting and seeing, you know, because I'm like, because I'm able to move around the screen wherever I please at the cost of my meter, but I want to like try to preserve my meter as much as possible so I can make the most of it when I get in. Because if I spend too much wolf meter, you know, zip zooping around and I finally get to them and I have no wolf meter, it's like I can't really do a whole lot with it. So because if I like try to do a combo after this, I'd run out of wolf meter and then I'd be stuck like this for another like uh, another several seconds where they can just do whatever they want and I just kind of have to run. So I have to be really careful about that. So I try to like play uh, very conservatively with my wolf meter when I'm in neutral. And uh, you can do that because uh, stuff like doing this doesn't take very much wolf meter. And uh, you know, just going around like this doesn't cost a whole lot either. So I like to wait a lot until I can find a good opening. And then I try to, I try to find an approach angle that'll work best for me. Say like if they're throwing a projectile at me, like something like this. Then uh, if I can pinpoint the right time they're doing that, I could do something like this, and then hop right over it, and then, you know, get my whole get my whole flow started right there. So you're kind of fishing for a whiff punish with this character. Oh, definitely. You're just you're just kind of waiting for that opportunity before you can like just go in and then just get your whole thing going. Something's interesting about his kit to me. He's got a lot of like lariat style moves that do like progress him forward. You know, he's got the wolf dashes, he's got the beast cannons, the John Talbanes, and then even his human form has like a shoulder charge lariat. You know, what what are you using most often to actually close a gap when you get an opportunity? Or like are you using all those kind of like in tandem? You know, what what's what's best in your opinion? Yeah. Well, um, both of these moves are pretty good. This one, the, like the uppercut elbow move, this one's more used for combos than anything. This one is actually, it actually is pretty nice to use in neutral sometimes because uh, sometimes, you know, you won't always have access to wolf form and sometimes it's nice to be able to just close the distance like this. And a very, it's very commonly used in pressure as well because uh, it's a very safe special because it's only minus one on block. So uh, if they barrier it, that means it's, uh, it adds an extra frame of block stun and it becomes uh, zero. So that's pretty nice. It, it can even become plus if you distance it far enough from the opponent. Like, that was definitely a plus tackle there. So uh, that, that can be a nice usage of it. The hitbox is also nice on it because um, it's basically like... It, the hitbox is what it looks like, which, uh, which is quite good. And also, in addition, all of his special moves, including this one, can be canceled into the wolf. So, in a, in a wolf dash to be specific, so if your opponent isn't expecting it, you can even mount your offense from it. In addition to, you know, being a combo tool as well. Because, uh, yeah, a lot of his combos use this move. Man, those combos just look so good with him flipping back and forth from wolf to human. That's such a cool uh, aesthetic to it. Yeah, no, definitely. That's and it's what you have to do because that's the, that's the way his combos work. And um, you know, and I want to um, really do damage with him. You know, you can you can really go for some cool stuff. Yeah, there's there's like a lot of possibilities with this character in terms of. Um, in terms of combo expression and whatnot. Uh, let me put my overdrive meter a little lower. I love how many directional options you have with the Beast Cannon too, especially in the air. Yeah. yeah, you get a lot of... Dude, uh, that's yeah, so sick. 
Yeah, because you get you get uh, something new to CF is he got like an upper beast cannon, like he can go straight in the air, which uh, it's, it's used sometimes, more used in combos than anything. But uh, yeah, he can go straight, he can go diagonally up, or he can go straight up. He can't go back, but I guess it wouldn't really serve a whole lot of a purpose if it you know if it had a hitbox on it. But um, these are another form of uh, you know approach option that you use in neutral. These are really good for whiff punishing as well because uh, these lead to these lead to full combos as well. That hit stun's actually kind of crazy. Jeez. Yeah, because it launches them up like that. <laughs> it's really nice for uh, for doing for doing confirms off of these. Yeah, it's a whole lot of uh, it's a whole lot of what we talked about already. A lot of waiting and seeing, and whiff punishing, and being very uh, attentive to what the opponent is doing. That's like a really central factor about his neutral game plan, I'd say. And it it just revolves around that. Well, now it's time to move on to the fun stuff where this character absolutely shines. Let's talk about his pressure and offense. So his kit is basically built to make your opponent sweat. So. Jonah, tell me what you do to make your opponent just straight up cry. How are you structuring your pressure? Yeah, well, um, yeah, he kind of just opens you up by just doing things, right? He doesn't <laughs> really necessarily have, he, if he, he shouldn't have any issues doing that. And in the case where he does, like against an uh, opponent who has really good defense, you know, it's like, chances are they're, I mean, if you can just look at how fast these overheads and lows are, it's like they're not reacting to all of these things. They're guessing, which means that they're not covering, um, you know, the other option that you haven't covered yet, which, uh, you know, he could always switch that up. And he has like about four chances, like about four mix ups before at full whiff meter uh, to, to open them up successfully before he can like kind of get that started again. But a lot of it is... Um, yeah, a lot of his offense is, you know, properly managing the wolf meter just so you don't run out. But, um, you know, aside from the layer one, like, if people start blocking the, you know, the first layer of my mix-up, which is usually, like, the... This is, like, the first layer. It's, like, he does a wolf dash in, and he does um, the double overhead, or he can do, like, one overhead and one low. It's, like, okay, if people are starting to block the double overhead, you know, that's when you go for the low, right? But... You can get a little bit more uh, tricky with that by uh, instead of doing the initial overhead, you can just you can just go straight for the low, like just transform back to the low, and then um, you'll get a lot of your wolf meter back by doing that, which is really nice. Oh my gosh, you're like almost back to full there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and then you just get to do it all over again. And if like people are starting to block my break jump A, you know, like uh, it's like okay, all right, they're I'm doing that a little too predictably. Then I'll either do something like do this and wait until I do the low, or I do something like this to, to you know to take advantage of people who you know think they're reacting to the break J A, like something like that. It's really nice for that stuff. Jeez, dude. Yeah, because, you know, it is possible to, because uh, it's not, like, fully un, um, unseeable, because, like, it, it can be done at different speeds, too. Sometimes it might not be done at, like, the fastest speed, so it's not always, like, uh, it's not always, it, like, you could always see, like, a little bit of a twitch, but uh, if you just do something like this, like, it'll it'll just open them up straight up most of the time, because they're looking for when he leaves the ground, and, right. uh... But, you know, but for most people, you know, it's just like a, a bunch of educated guesses, which is, you know, that's <laughs> kind of how you're supposed to defend against this character. Right. Um, let's say your opponent is absolutely godlike and they have just gambled correctly, blocked everything, and you're getting low on wolf meter. Does he have good tools to, like, reset his pressure so you can kind of build wolf back? Do you tend to, like, back off and go back to your neutral game? What's, what's your play there? Um, typically, if everybody's blocking everything, you know, that's typically, it's typically when I kind of result to going back to human form and, um, trying to put my pressure back here so I can, so I can buy time in order to get my wolf meter back. 
And, uh, or, you know, another good option is to just, like, back off and kind of reset to neutral so you can get your wolf meter back. But you could also take a gamble and, um, you know, do, like, one last final human form mix-up. Like a, like a wolf empty dash throw or something to get all your wolf meter back. But it is a bit risky to do so, and it isn't, it's, it's a little easier to see. Because your options are a lot more limited when your wolf form's low. But, uh, yeah, you could also do some stuff, because all his wolf can normals are jump cancelable. Something that I wanted to do more is to just, like, cancel them into, uh, air dashes and transform back into human and kind of get things started back from there. But, um, yeah, a lot of it is, uh, you, you're basically, like, the, the fun part is more or less over at that point. Although, you, if you have enough meter, you know, you can do some, uh, you can do some sneaky stuff, like, uh, something like this, you know, if you... If you're running all out on the wolf meter, you can still, like, snag in something like that. <laughs> so, so, like, you can still get a 50, like, one last 50 50 if you have enough meter. Or, like, uh, let me see, what else? Like, it's mostly just, um, yeah, you're just trying to find a safe way to either disengage yourself or. Or find yourself back to human form again so you don't like completely run out of wolf meter because that's that's definitely the worst case scenario that you want to avoid at all costs if you can. Sometimes it's kind of hard to. In fact, yeah, sometimes it's, it's really hard to, but you know, it's kind of one of the things you just got to do while you're playing this character. Makes sense. A lot of what uh, you've been demonstrating is in the corner. How does he do in like a mid screen situation? Like, what's your goal if you have them blocking in the mid screen? Uh, so if you're if they're blocking in the mid screen, the mix-ups are more or less the same. Uh, the only difference is the combo because uh, his the the thing about his mid screen uh, combos is that they don't regenerate a whole lot of wolf meter for him. He has to spend a lot, but he spends that by getting them into the corner. Right. So like he does a lot of corner positioning through his uh, through his combos like this. But as you can see, you know they're very. They go, he goes very negative on wolf meter if he does that. But in the corner, you know he's very uh, wolf meter positive off a lot of his confirms. So he's or really. Like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, or, yeah, yeah. Or like something like uh, something like this. It's like, okay, I get like half of it back and more if I decide to stay in human form a little longer. So, um, yeah, the objective is definitely to get them to the corner. And it's, it's clear in his, in his kit that that's what they want you to do because, uh, you know, how, how much corner carry he's capable of doing. Right. And then you just kind of, and then that's, that's kind of where his win condition lies is when you corner your opponent. JB is such a saucy button. That wolf JB, it looks so sick when you link those in there. Oh yeah, it looks good. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's also Blows nice for doing. It's also nice for doing some mix-ups too every now and then because uh, you can cancel it into either the wolf JC or the wolf 5C afterwards. So it sounds like you. He's really living in like high low. Like that's really his. his bread and butter he's not going for left rights very often or anything like that it's just kind of a strictly high low game yeah he can do some cross-ups but they aren't they're pretty wolf meter intensive and they aren't like they aren't very um it, it isn't really strong to do it against like barrier and stuff so it's uh it's it's he's more limited in the cross-up department but his high low game is so good it doesn't really matter to yeah be honest. that makes sense yeah, he does have throws too. You know, he can like do this in, for to go into throws, or he can, uh, you know, stagger his jabs and do a wolf throw. Which, uh, by the way, this used to be a command throw, which uh, was not able to be teched, even though it can be now. There's uh, for a long time he you were not able to tech that throw, which uh, you know a lot of people uh, didn't like so much because it was it was really cheap to have to deal with. Uh, really oppressive high low and a command throw but you know he doesn't have he doesn't have that anymore gotcha it looked like decent range on the grab though like not oh uh, yeah it's uh, yeah it's uh you know it, it helps that he that his wolf form is wide so he's able to mm. he's able to grab at a pretty fairly fairly nice distance 
Not a bad damage on that either. Sitting just shy of 3,000. Yeah, and you know, if you it, it, another reward of getting a wolf throw is you get some of your meter back. Oh, just like inherently from landing it? That was cool. Yeah, and if you decide to not combo after it, it actually regenerates like the whole thing. Oh. But uh, I never do that. I always do a combo afterwards. <laughs> Because uh, it, the the little bit extra you get is enough to get a pretty a pretty nice combo in there, and get some wolf meter back. The loops, dude. Yeah, the, you you do that just so you can get your wolf meter back. Because it it doesn't really add much damage to it, but it doesn't really matter because you just want the wolf meter back. Yeah, just burn some time. Anything else that you use? What's, what, what do you have that's devious? I know you've got some, like, stuff in your back pocket that, like, makes people cry. L l show me something horrible. Like, evil yeah. mix up. Let me, let me see it. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, this is something that I um, I learned from uh, someone else. Kapami is a Japanese uh, Valk player. But, yeah, no, something that uh, I saw that... Um, that that you could do is something like this. Like what I said before, like maybe when you're low on wolf meter, and then you um, you could get a triple overhead off of that. When normally it's a double, and uh, you can get off your, you can get all your wolf meter from that because because uh, the the follow up combo for that would um, let's see get them crouch. Well, let me get a lower on wolf meter to demonstrate that. Yeah, and then I just just, just all it just keeps keeps happening all over again. Jeez. So how are you setting up that that triple overhead? You doing wolf dash JA into JB and then switching back and like jump canceling into a JC? Yeah, uh, this is his JC actually. His JB is this. Oh oh yeah, yeah okay. Whip. But uh, they basically yeah I do that and then I transform back and then I can uh, do the last the last layer of that overhead. And then also there's stuff like this too, where it's just like you're you're high in the air, but you just come down straight for a low. I don't think I could block this character for three seconds. Yeah. Uh, most people can't, uh, rightfully so. Me, not nah, nah, you'd be surprised. Even even other Valkanine players can't really do it. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. Cause like I'm watching this, I'm just like layer one would get me every single time. Like yeah. <laughs> there's just no way. Yeah, exactly. Layer one is because uh, it's 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 deceptive, right? Because you think he's gonna go for a low immediately afterwards, but then he just, you know, kicks his legs up and does that. And you know, he's always capable of doing other overheads in the middle of that. I think a big piece of it psychologically too is how not high in the air he is. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's not like it, it just registers like his airborne land. the whole time. Yeah, so he's like just able to just keep doing this and overload everybody's senses. Oof. Yeah, that's that's painful. Yeah, so he's just able to just keep keep it going as long as he has the meter. So essentially, your goal is to just to boil this all down to like a summary. You're Getting in their face, mixing them into oblivion, trying to use your combos to regenerate your wolf to then mix them into oblivion again, rinse, repeat until they die. How many touches does that usually take? Like four? Um, sometimes. It really depends on who I'm fighting because uh, characters' health values can vary uh, quite differently in this game. But uh, yeah, his, his A starters don't really do a whole lot. They can do like... Um, yeah, you know, somewhere around like 2k and mid screen it's like a little less than that i think yeah like something like 1.9 so the whole objective is to drag them all into the corner and uh his mid screen combos really don't do a whole lot but uh they do a little more when he, once he gets into the corner especially when he gets his c starters going but um something like uh four to five you know low damage is one of uh is something that a lot of uh, people say is a problem that he has because uh, he does have to hit people a lot so characters who do a lot of damage it's a little it's stressful to fight them because uh, they can just touch you twice and he has to touch you a lot more times 
But, you know, as you can see, he has the mix of tools to make it a lot easier to hit people. Yeah. Is it... I don't want to talk about actual knockdown situations yet, but does is he, like... Is it pretty easy to get them in the knockdown situation you want every time? Like, I see you end with, like, his human JC a lot. Does that, does that give you what you need for the most part? Yeah, especially in the corner. Mid-screen, it's a bit finicky because, uh... The roll system is really uh makes it hard to lock them down to one specific uh to one specific location. Although most uh like I want to say like 75% of the time they're gonna roll backwards because they want to just get away from me. <laughs> Which, right. You know it's pretty uh it's respectable. But uh, it, it there's um but for in the corner you know if you just space yourself out like a little bit like right here to where that you're like outside of roll range you know you can cover a lot of options really well. Although a lot of people um, will try to, you know, do um, do sneaky stuff like um, like use the quick get up, <laughs> you know, to kind of like su 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 to kind of like surprise the the Valk and hit them, which you know it, it can work every now and then, but he it's really easy for him to check it if he if he thinks it's coming, because uh, it's a he's able to um, just kind of do that without committing a whole lot. So yeah, it's like, it, like it's not deep. too hard to blow that up. You just have you just, you just kind of have to be on it, you know. You can't like be too relaxed when you're pressuring them. You kind of just oh, that, that's why like I I set my training mode settings to different, but uh, I am always ran I always put these at random because uh, I always want to train myself to uh, be able to react to every tech situation that I can see because uh, otherwise then I'll just. I'll end up losing games that I could have won because um, cause I lost track of them. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, let's uh, since we're already kind of talking about it, let's let's go a little deeper on his Okazeme game. So, you know, what's what's he doing when he gets a knockdown? Since he is so touch reliant, you know, how are you how are you playing off the knockdown situations against your opponent? Yeah, well, uh, you know, as you can see on some of his no on his knockdowns in the corner, a lot of what I'm doing is, um, like, if I see that they are on the ground, I usually just go up and check them real quick with a Wolf 5A, just so I can catch their roll attempts and get a fairly good amount of Wolf Meter back. If they emergency tech, you know, I can... I can see that and I can kind of I don't have to check for anything unless they have a DP or something of course. So then I can just like, you know, go with the mix up I want to go with. So it's a lot of um you have to check their initial tech option, but after that you can kind of just, you know, you you can do what you want in in your pressure for the most part. And you know, we talked earlier about how uh, the wolf dash um, four and seven, I think, the little boomerang dashes are pretty good for like baiting out buttons. Does that come into play in your Oki pretty often? Uh, it it comes into play uh, in uh, in several cases. Um, one is when I'm uh, avoiding DPS um, because it has the whole time. But another way is um, is to um, is to bait counter assaults. Ooh. So, which are really good in this game, but he's able to avoid them like that. Or in some cases, he can he can even avoid bursts with it too. Oh, I didn't even think about burst bait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's and then yeah, you pretty much won from there because they don't have a burst anymore. You can just do whatever you want. Yeah. Jeez. Do, is it okay this is a really specific question and it's kind of pivoting away from the oki topic but uh you know exceed excel fairly decent defensive mechanic in here you know hold the overdrive and you get the super do you find yourself like if you see them overdrive do you try to boomerang out of there to dodge any potential exceed excels does that ever come up oh it comes up a lot yeah that's that is another really prominent example of how you use that because you have to do this stuff like that because you can't block it But you are able to do it if you can call it out. Is that but something you have to predict, or can you uh, like react and cancel into that dash? Yeah, you uh, you pretty much have to guess. 
Although there is an OS that you can do. There, this character has a lot of option selects because of the nature of his dashes and how short the recovery is on his JA. So um, here, I actually OS that. I did not guess that correctly, but I did an OS where I was able to um, I was able to avoid the EA because um, I, let me try to record it here. So it just looks like an over. I'm doing a double overhead, but um, but the reality of that is I'm actually um, <laughs> I actually did an OS there, and he just avoids the dash, or he avoids the EA on his own without me uh, having to do it manually. I just I sneak the dash input in there by pressing uh, C and D at the same time. This also works on certain DPS if they're slow enough. So. Um, what makes and that then, uh, OS trigger? Like, cause you're it, you're doing what? You're doing C and D at the same time to get the break there. But it's... yeah, basically, I'm plinking the but like by plinking these buttons together. Um, C will take priority over D when it hits because of the way the hit stop works. Uh, if you do it correctly, of course. I didn't do it correctly that other time. And then um, if you um, if you you know, do it, it, it if you do it in this whiffs. There's not, there's no hit stop for that to uh, trigger the C anymore. So instead, the so instead the dash will come out. Oh, that or, is nifty. See. Yeah. So as you can see, like I did the. Yeah. So the dash do comes out if it whiffs, but if it if it doesn't, then then I block. But um, I do mess it up a decent amount. It is hard, so it's uh. It's not an easy OS to do, but it, it, it is very rewarding if you can do it. Damn. Okay. Good good diversion. We can uh we can go back to Okazeme and knockdowns now. So it doesn't seem like Valkenheim gets like particularly hard knockdowns off any of his combos. Like I see they're bouncing up a lot. Um is it so there's not like any it doesn't look like he's going for like safe jumps very often necessarily as much as he's going for like meaty buttons yeah exactly although he does have access to safe jumps but it's it, it's like he can't uh he can't enforce them like super well like other characters can because he doesn't have hard knockdown access so it's uh he does have it off of his 6b but um you know it's not really something that he can like safe jump from so it's not like a very key part of his game plan but uh, if he really wants to, he can do it. And, uh, you know, he can bait DPs that way, which is pretty nice to sneak in every now and again. But it, it relies on the opponent to emergency tech. Because if they don't, then, you know, there's no real safe jump there. They can just roll away. Does he have any uh, any reset options? Reset options? Uh, yeah, he has a few. But um, it's typically not what he goes for a lot of the time but gotcha. um but there's something there's there's some stuff like you can do like uh you know reset an overhead here or maybe like um you know go into your wolf dash straight from your human form stuff it's a lot of a lot of stuff regarding the human form more than the wolf form itself honestly gotcha so it doesn't come into play very much so typically what you're going to want to do is go for that meaty wolf 5a and try and reset from there yeah just try to open them up <laughs> And then once you open them up, you know, you want to you want to focus on wolf gauge regeneration. But you know, there's always there's always cute stuff you can do like uh like this little thing right here. Ooh. Okay, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, so I used the super to um to restand them from being in a in an airborne position and then i just went into wolf form and did a instant overhead from there oh well that's useful Jeez. yeah it's more of a it's kind of it's really expensive because you have to spend all your meter to do it but you know it's something that you can do if you want a little, some, a little trick well i like that it's a relatively simple oki plan i feel like that leaves a lot of room for you to just keep the complexity in the mix-up category like that's nice yeah, exactly. You I already usually, have to it, push a hundred buttons to do that, so you might yeah. as well just push one on Oki. Yeah, although I can do some cute stuff every now and again. Like, like this is something else I could do, even if it's a little wolf expensive. 
What? Was that uh, Wolf JB? Yeah, I was. Yeah, uh, he he didn't tech right there, bro. Oh, it happens so fast. Yeah, so... yeah, exactly. It kind of just like <laughs> you're just like all of a sudden you're getting up. You're like, oh, he's he's doing an overhead on me. Well, right here is where I put the slow mo version of that clip, so me and everyone else can understand <laughs> what just happened. Or maybe doing stuff like uh. You know, doing the you know, doing a quadruple overhead too. <laughs> oh Jesus, dude! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's a a barrier block is a something that you kind of have to do against him, or else he'll just be able to just do everything. You have to be able to push him out to limit his options more. But stuff like this, you know, it's you you, you can't barrier him out from that. So yeah, you have to block all four of those. These dashes seem pretty. Adept at not allowing barrier to happen much. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there was the cross up. Oh yeah, that's like just something you can throw in there every once in a while. Jeez. Let's uh let's move to the least fun part always. This is a fighting game. We love making people feel bad about themselves in the corner, but sometimes shoes on the other foot and you gotta block. We've already talked a little bit about how his defense is kind of a lacking category for him, but let's dive into that. How do you play defense with Falcon 9? How are you surviving when you have to block? Well, um, a lot of it is um, just maximizing my usage of system mechanics because uh, the, the game has, gives you a, quite a lot of system mechanics to work with, like instant block and barrier and instant barrier, but um, it's pretty important to just be able to do that to just minimize the the damage that you'll take so you can like space your out, yourself out pretty far if you can instant barrier a lot and then I, I like to find uh, opportunities for me to escape like by doing stuff like uh, 4d or um, maybe even doing his uh, his guard point 6a which has guard point at frame 5 so you're kind of able to do stuff like that that seems strong yeah it's it it's uh it, it has body and head armor it doesn't have low armor so uh, it, it would lose to it would lose to something like that like so use wisely it, it, yeah but it, it but it is nice it also feels really good to hit people with that <laughs> and then there's also this which is a really good defensive option from him if he can get the space for it is uh doing something like uh you doing a going into his wolf form and coming back in, <laughs> kind of be a way he can start his offense. What are you doing there to make that happen? So I'm back jumping, I'm turning into wolf, and I'm quickly dashing back down uh, with the uh, with with the with three D. Gotcha. It's very handy, especially when characters kind of leave you at a distance. And then they're back in the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's like, a, you know, it'd be it's optimal when you're able to get out and get a hit. But, um, you know, it's not like he has a DP. He does have a super, though, and it is fully invul. That restand one from earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is his invincible reversal. It's decently fast, too. But um, it's um, just... It's really easy to avoid because the hitbox is kind of low, so you can get it, you can jump over it, and he won't be able to rapid cancel it even if he has full meter. So, um, and also of course, you know, looking for places for me to counter assault. His counter assault's really good because it's really big, so he's able to, um, like even at like really far distances, he's able to counter assault pretty well. Is that the equivalent of his? Is that five B or five C? That's his 5C. Yeah, nice, so, which is nice which is a very big legs. normal. Yeah, exactly. So he's able to get people off of him with that uh, pretty well. Does the? I it's what I spend a lot. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Uh, I was gonna say the. Uh, I know the counter assault properties are a little different, but since he does have wolf leg on that, does it let you cancel into drive? Uh, unfortunately, no. Because that was the rule for most normals, right? Like, as if he has the wolf limb, he can go full wolf after that. Yeah, except to her JC, of course. But uh, it, it, uh, it, unless he's in overdrive, though, he can in that. 
But um, yeah, it is grounded normals he can, but uh, counter assaults aren't counted as normals. Gotcha. So, um, so he's not able to do that. Yeah, that would be pretty busted, I guess. Yeah, well, instead there's characters like Carl who can combo off their counter assaults and put you in the corner and do full unreactable stuff play off of them, so... Well, nobody likes you know, Carl, and everybody likes Valkenheim, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about everybody, but... Well, yeah, except <laughs> but for the guy who's him. blocking him right now, that guy doesn't <laughs> like him very much, but... Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I, I do think... That I'm, I'm biased as hell, but I do, I do think he's a lot cooler, at the very least. Let me ask you this that's kind of tangentially related. So we've talked about how he has, like, rough matchups against uh, characters that control the screen really well. Like, Zoner's probably a bad time. Really has to implement the 5Ds of dodgeball. Uh, how Do you have, like, a pattern for how you move to avoid certain projectiles? Like, wh what's your, your kind of approach to moving around the screen and dodging just crap with him? Yeah, so I'd say it's to uh, incite them to use their projectiles at um you know because I, I i like try to stay away and uh, usually they'll try to poke at me with projectiles and uh, whatnot and i use that opportunity to kind of make my approach because uh i mean it, he's not bad versus all zoners ironically enough characters like uh the the murakumo sword characters like uh new and lambda he he fights them very well because uh they're, I guess uh, if I were to wear the difference between them and the other zoners, it's like they um, they do have a lot of screen presence like this, but it's it's committal. So uh, if I read an option correctly, like if I jump over them when they do this, then um, it's not looking very good for them because they don't have anything to get off, <laughs> get me off of them very well because their defensive options outside of their back dishes are also not very good. Yeah, and then like you know, they kind of just have to hold everything that I that I bring bring onto them at that point. But essentially, a lot of it is just you know kind of provoking them to shoot, and then me just taking advantage of that by um, you know really just uh, taking advantage of uh, the gap that they leave. Gotcha. Okay. All right, we're we're at a fun part in the episode right now. I need you to okay. show me. I need you to show me the sauce. I need to see either your favorite or your flashiest combo, or if those things overlap, that's fine too. But I just need to see a sick combo right now. I need it for my soul. Okay. All right. Let me uh, think about it. I mean, I think I probably already showed it. To be you have actually you. shown a significant amount of sick combos. So credit to you for that. <laughs> yeah. There's um. Oh, they are blocking. Yeah, I mean, there's like, you know, double transform combos like this one, but... That's easily the most damage I've seen out of you since we started. <laughs> yeah, it's off of a fatal counter punish, so, uh, you know, okay. it's pretty... It's pretty nice, but, you know, he's able to do some pretty sick overdrive routes as well. Oh, sorry, I messed that up. Yeah, let me see. What was that Rudolph again? Oh, yeah, there it was, yeah. <laughs> I like the Beast Cannon up to get, like, the position for the super. That's cool. Yeah, no, he has a... The sky's the limit with him in terms of combo creation. He's able to just do so much stuff because of all his beast, the different beast cannons and um, and whatnot. What's the most beast cannons you can fit into a single combo? You can fit like nine, I think. Like can something you do it? like some crazy number. Let me see. Uh, was it nine? It might be like eight. Let me see if I can try to do that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, it's eight. Either way, that's sick. It's so many of them. I know you uh, you compete, but you've also been playing this game a really long time. Do you tend to lean towards uh, more like expressive, flashy combos in your gameplay, or do you like the practical, like guaranteed kind of stuff more often? 
Oh, I like the practical guaranteed stuff more often, for sure. I definitely prefer stuff like that where I can just I can just do it, and it's effective and it's easy and um, and it's a, and yeah. I I make that exception for characters like Valkenhayn though because uh, if you can't do stuff like his um, his link like that link or um, or this link, like the link the from the from the beast cannon to the 2C. Like, if you can't do that stuff, then, like, you lose out on so much wolf meter from him. And, um, it kind of ruins the point of, uh, of playing him. But, you know, they're not that hard. It just takes a lot of time. Right. If I were to say so. But, yeah, just the, those mandatory things, I always make sure to get. Alright, man. The, uh, the next question will be the last one. But before we go to that, is there anything we haven't talked about about Valk that you want to cover that you think is important that you think people picking them up should know you know what's what's your final word before we wrap it up um i'd say you know if you want to play him you should you know it's like he's he is technical and it does take a lot of execution but um you can uh you can play valkanine you know it's not it, it's not it's not rocket science playing no playing anybody in this game isn't rocket science really it's it, it takes some time right but it you know it's just it's just just all about uh, dedication to you know learning the learning the mandatory links like this one or um, you know getting your break jump a timing down you know it took me a long time to be honest there was actually a point where like I didn't know if I was able to keep playing this character because uh, because of how uh, like I couldn't do his combos for a while but then I stuck with it and you know and now here I am now I'm just he's my favorite character in the game and. Uh, it's been like that for uh been that since I been like that since I came back to Blazemoon and Censure and in Chrono Phantasma. So that's been quite a few years I've been with this character and you know and the it, it's mostly highs. In fact this was kinda of the lowest point that he's had and he's it's he's the lowest point and he's like A tier, so that goes to show how strong he's been over the years. But yeah, at least to say it's it's been very worth it. Jonah, if someone came to you tomorrow and said, hey man, I'm thinking about picking up Valkenhayn, but I'm kind of on the fence about it. What are you saying to them to push them over the edge? Why should someone play Valkenhayn in Blaze Blue Central Fiction? Yeah, well, if you really like a character that you can devote yourself to and he will reward you, then uh, it, he will reward you in a way that you can feel like you can express yourself, both on offense and defense, or not defense, sorry, <laughs> on, uh, on neutral or offense, then uh, then he's great. You know, if you love his aesthetic, you love the way he fights, and you like the flow of his game plan, and he looks fun to you, then you should pick him up, and, you know, I'd be happy to teach anybody this character, you know? It's, uh, it's always, I'm, I always love talking about this character, because he's just, like, he's a character that I've, he's been with, because, like, I've, you know, playing this game for, since it came out, CT, and uh, that's 2009, and I'm like, uh, I'm 24. It came out when I was like 12, and uh, you know, seeing uh, CS Valk uh, the trailer for the first time, you know, I was just like blown away. You know, I was just like, wow, this character is so cool. You know, can't wait to play him. And uh, and then yeah, I, I I played him for all those years, and it was really something. So yeah, I think uh, anybody who thinks he's cool should pick him up and play him because he's he's really a blast to play. Good deal, man. Well said. And yeah, that brings us to the end, man. We made it. Good stuff. Oh, all right. And, uh, you know, pretty stoked that this is only the first of maybe more than one episode featuring you. So that's exciting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I do play a, a pretty decent amount of characters. But, you know, I think the... I think most people would know the other character I'm about to cover, so <laughs> I guess look forward to that. Yep, yep. All right, man. 